So is Real Housewives of Potomac star Ashley Darby's husband, soon to be ex-husband, Michael Darby, the largest landowner in Somalia? And apparently, there is more to this story, so much so that Ashley's co-star, Candace, is weighing in on social media, referring to Michael Darby possibly as a colonizer. Welcome back to the Campfire Daily YouTube channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. So a lot of you have been tagging me in this story for at least the last week about Michael Darby. But this type of story, you have to do a little bit more digging. So I was in the Reddit streets, I was in these Twitter streets, and I was in these Google Schmoogle streets. So Michael Darby, as you know, has really not been on The Real Housewives of Potomac the last couple of seasons. But you also know we found out in part one of The Real Housewives of Potomac reunion that Ashley Darby is getting nothing in this divorce because of her prenup. <laughs> But apparently, Gullum is definitely a lot smarter than anyone thought, especially about making money and making sure that Ashley Darby gets none of it. But this particular story is very troublesome because how did Michael Darby make his money? How did he get so rich? Well, this story dates all the way back at least 10 or more years. We had to look at actual The Washington Post, The Wall Street Journal, and of course, Reddit. <laughs> Shout out to the Reddit fo folks out there. As always, we will be citing our sources in the description because there are a lot of sources that I will be covering in this video. So this was recently sparked, even though people have been talking about this for a few years, this was recently sparked by a Twitter user named Amina. And Amina's not even a Housewives fan. She really is talking about these issues, these social issues that are happening in the world, specifically in Africa. So it was her tweet from February 22nd where she says, for those curious enough to interrogate this, Michael Darby, a white American, we know he's Australian, but I don't even know if he is an American citizen. He might be, meaning that he, you know, naturalized. So American real estate developer, most notable for being someone's husband on one of the Real Housewives shows, is one of the largest landowners in Mogadishu, Somalia, and earns a substantial wealth from the war on Somalis. And I know what you're thinking. Who, what, where? How does she know this? Is this even true? Well, I decided to do a little Google schmoogle. Follow me here. So when I did a little bit of a Google smuggle on Michael Darby, it talks about how he made his money. And this is from moneyinc.com. So it talks about the failed restaurant. It talks about the Real Housewives of Potomac. But it also talks about his real estate company in D.C., Monument Realty. Then it talks about his global assets. They write this. Although the, the majority of Darby's financial dealings are in Washington, D.C., he has property and businesses around the world. According to Otakukart, he is one of the largest landowners in Somalia, which is where a lot of his net worth is centered. Additionally, he owns 44 acres with an airport in Mogadishu, which he helped build. Aside from these, he owns countless projects in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. So, of course, I had to go to this other website that's, that cites this. Otaka Kukart, I apologize for my pronunciation, they highlight this part of Michael Darby's wealth and his ownership in Somalia. So they, they write this in regards to Michael Darby's net worth. They says, as per the reports, Michael Darby has an estimated net worth of a whopping $20 million. He happens to be one of the largest real estate owners in Somalia, and nevertheless, most of his wealth has directly stemmed from that. One can measure how successful he is by the 44-acre compound near the airport in Mogadishu that he has built. He owns the Australian restaurant Oz, which, as you know, has now closed. So, look, I'm not familiar with this website. I, look, there are plenty of websites out there that are credible. I don't know about this particular one until I continued my, my, my reading of the threads that I that had seen on Reddit and on Twitter 
to find out in the Wall Street Journal, they actually have a quote from Michael Darby in the Wall Street Journal about this property that he has in Mogadishu, Somalia. So the article stems back from 2013, and it's titled, A Bet on Peace for War-Torn Somalia. So they say this, Michael Darby says this in the article. So all along, though he expanded in real estate, in 2011, he created the for-profit side of the company, Bancroft Global Investment. That year, he sold an 18% stake, just under $1 million, in the Somali properties to a Washington D developer, Michael Darby. They're talking about someone else in this article, and they're talking about the sale to Michael Darby. So Michael says this in the article. When you hear Somalia, you think of the most dangerous place on earth, says Mr. Darby. But I'm prone to take more risks than others. Can y'all believe this shit? Can y'all believe this shit? But as I mentioned to you before, this is not the first time that this has been mentioned about Michael Darby and his involvement in Somalia. So Twitter handle Voice of Jubaland, they report on Somali information, Somali news all the time. They talked about this at the top of this year. So very similar to what I've already reported to you in regards to this, Voice of Jubaland on Twitter wrote this, one of the wealthiest landowners in Somali is not an, an ethnic Somali, but rather an Australian man by the name of Michael Darby. He owns a 44-acre plot of land in Mogadishu close to the airport. They continue, in 2011, Michael Darby bought 18% of Bancroft Global Investments. 2011 saw the start of Bancroft's training of African Union mission to Somali personnel, particularly the National Defense Forces of Burundi and Uganda. In 2015, the United Nations Department of Peacekeeping Operations provided 50% of the organization's budget in Somalia. The U.S. Department of State pays the majority of the company's expenses related to the training of the armed forces of African countries. The National Intelligence and Security Agency military unit, DENAB, was trained by the company in 2016 until the United States Marine Corps took over the training of DENAB at Balagdago Airfield. So this, is, this was a tweet from January 5th of this year. But this has been going on for years, as you can see, dated in this article. So in this other article, in the Washington Post, Michael Darby talks about his ownership of land in Somalia. Saying this, and this article is from 2016, they write, Darby set two new courses. The first was to heavily invest in the ultimate emerging real estate market, Mogadishu, Somalia, where he has built a 44-acre compound near the airport and the site for the film Black Hawk Down, making him one of the Civil War-stricken country's largest real estate owners. So for those of you that might be like, how does Amina know this? Is this even true? Well, there are several, not me, this feels like college again, citing my sources. But you know that's what we do here. Literally, there are multiple sources, multiple credible media sources confirming that Michael Darby is the largest, largest landowner in Somalia. And I know what some of you are thinking, why is that bad? I'm not going to sit here and act as if I know all of what's going on in Somalia or give you the intricacies of and how complex this is when it comes to what's going on in Somalia. And I know there will be a lot of speculation in regards to can he own property in Somalia? What effect that, does that have on the people of Somalia? That is a larger, complexer conversation. As you know, on the channel, we report on the housewives. We report on pop culture news, celebrities, and things like that. But this is related. This is related. And the ownership of this land over in Somalia is very interesting. It's very complex because we're also wondering, what does this do for the people of Somalia? And is it right that someone that is in Somali owns the majority of this country. That is a larger and complexer conversation. And that is something I implore people that are in Africa, people that are in Somalia, that people that are well aware of why this is wrong, why this is something that we should be talking about. Please, as always, have a constructive conversation in the comment section. But I'm not done. I'm not done. So before we get into what Candace had to say, so some people on the Reddit streets were speculating well, with the complexities of terrorism and things like that in Somalia, 
is he able to purchase property? Is he in bed with possible, I'm not going to, uh, allegedly. So one of the Reddit users was responding to speculation on his connection to, you know, this property and, and this property's connection to situations going on in Somalia. They respond, he says, I'm Somali and I know about this place. It's called Zelane. It is under the jurisdiction of the United States, UN, sort of like an embassy. It's where the military and NGOs live. He owns especially a military compound in that space, which I've, I've mentioned to you from other articles. But there is still question on whether or not, even though this is space that is owned by the U.S. and the U.N., a lot of people are still saying that, well, that connection to Somali military and Somali government over there is still somewhat questionable, allegedly. This story has been making the rounds this last week, even though this has been going on for years. It's been making the rounds recently. And apparently you guys tagged Candace in this and Candace decided to chime on. And part of the reason why I was like, okay, that's the cherry on top. That's the sign for me to get in. All right, let's talk about this. So Candace responds on her Twitter, not, not mentioning anything specific, but we know exactly what you were talking about, Candace. Candace says, not a colonizer with a bunch of emojis. As you know, Candace referred to Michael Darby at one point in past seasons as Ashley Darby's overseer. And although she was being facetious, I don't know if that's the right word to use in this particular situation, the news of Michael Darby being the largest landowner in Somalia is interesting. It's interesting. And I know a lot of you are still wondering, like, why is this necessarily a bad thing? Well, Africa is still not the same after colonialism. And some people say that colonialism in parts of Africa is far from over. And it's situations and stories like this that makes people go like, wait a minute. What exactly does this benefit the Somali people? Well, I'm not going to speak for the Somali people. The great thing about YouTube is that it is global. And there are people that are Somalian and people that are in Africa that can share their thoughts. And I know all of us want to know and want to hear from them because we as Americans can only share our opinions on what it looks like to us. But what is it really for that country? Guys, as always, we're going to continue to follow this story because I believe there's more to it. Because I believe and I'm willing to hear and see and read what exactly has Michael Darby's ownership in Somalia, the, the largest landowner in Somalia, done for the country? Guys, as always, I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Please be constructive in your opinions. Again, if you have more knowledge on this subject and the ramifications of something like this, please let us know in the comment section. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. Thanks for watching.